Hi. Wanna say hi? Say hi, honeys. This is Leo. He's so cute. Hey, what's Leo? Beings that I suffered so much with chronic pain and chronic tension during my years of chronic illness, I had to learn how to release my tension. More than anything, I struggled most with chronic tension in my head, so that being my forehead, um, my jaw, just kind of all over in my head. Um, the back of my neck, my neck in general, my shoulders, um, down into my back, my low back, and my hips. This topic of how I stay relaxed and how I release tension has come up uh, in many conversations of mine over the years. Not a ton, this hasn't been requested a ton, but it has come up many, many times. And I thought it was time to cover this in video topic, um, especially since I've been doing a lot of these techniques lately, since I've been in a health flare. So I've been working on releasing tension, working on releasing stress, and these types of things really helped for me. So thought I would share. This is how I stay relaxed. Number one is yoga. I do yoga or some type of light stretching almost daily. So for a lot of years when I was chronically ill, I actually did used to do full on yoga every day for sometimes 30 minutes to an hour if I could, if I needed to. Um, unfortunately, I've gotten lazy and I don't do that much yoga anymore. I really should because it feels great but I've gotten lazy and I really only do just a couple minutes here and there, or sometimes I don't. Um, but when I don't do yoga, if I don't do any type of stretching, I notice that a lot of my chronic tension areas, the ones that I listed before, that those start to come back. They get more tension again. And when those places tighten up, it increases my stress, it affects my sleep, it affects my pain levels. It even can make me so tight that parts of my body slip out of place. I've had ribs pop out of place because I got so tight. Um, I've had my back go out of place because I get so tight. I have my hips very often actually go out of place because I get so tight. So I should get back into doing my daily yoga. I actually already made a video about my 30 minute daily yoga routine. I will link that below if you're interested in checking it out. Um, but that's pretty much like what my routine used to look like on an average day. More than anything, the most important parts of my body that I have to stretch out are my neck, my shoulders, my back, and my hips because those areas were my problem areas. The routine that I shared in video format already, it's really gentle. It's mostly stretching. I prefer restorative yoga or pregnancy yoga. It's super, super low impact. It's very gentle. It's relaxing and soothing. It's not like a workout. It's intended for relaxing your body. And that's what was good for me, being that I was like chronically ill and had chronic pain. That worked for me. That was really good for me. And I liked doing yoga later at night before bed because that helped me relax and get ready for sleep. So if you're interested in this type of yoga, you can Google restorative yoga or pregnancy yoga. There is also bed yoga. Um, all three of those options are great. I did a lot of bed yoga beings that I was bed bound or couch bound for so many years. I don't have a video showing how I do that yet, but I will work on that. And once it's done, I will make sure to link it into this. So. It was my physical therapist who encouraged me as a young teen to try out yoga and daily stretching, to just gently stretch multiple times a day or as needed, to remember to stay loose and not get tense. She was the one who encouraged that and it really made a huge difference in my life and maybe it would make a difference for someone else too. Number two is deep breathing. Throughout the day, I remind myself to breathe. <laughs> This advice to use deep breathing as a stress reliever was brought to me by my therapist. So when my therapist gave me this advice, I was really struggling with my mental health. That being depression, depersonalization, anxiety, panic attacks. I had a lot going on in my head, in my mental health. And she really encouraged me to try out deep breathing, diaphragm breathing, or meditative breathing. Later on, my physical therapist also suggested the same thing. They're very paralleled in their advice. Um, and it really made a big difference for me. 
there's a lot of science as to why deep breathing or diaphragm breathing is so good for the body, why it's so healing and restorative for the body. So you can Google into that if you're more curious of needing science to validate this, but it works and it feels good and I suggest it. <laughs> Don't forget to breathe, y'all. Don't forget to breathe. When in doubt, just take a pause in your life. Focus on your breathing, focus on relaxing, focus on centering. If you really are lost in learning how to breathe, learning how to deep breathe, then there are tons of apps out there that can lead you through like guided breathing. Um, that's a great option if you need that. That never worked for me, but it's something to try. <laughs> Be sure to check out my video that I did specifically just for deep breathing and diaphragm breathing if you want to know more about my personal tips here. Number three is meditation. Daily meditation has been a part of my life now for about seven or eight years. Um, I started doing meditation in my teens. It was encouraged by both my therapist and my physical therapist that I try out meditation and see if it made a difference for my chronic stress, my chronic tension, my everything that I had going on. They both felt like it would be really beneficial to me and I'm super thankful that they suggested that to me you know, as a young teen. I honestly turned to meditation not only for my physical pain and my mental health stuff, but mostly because I wasn't sleeping. A couple of videos back, I talked about how I healed my insomnia. So if you wanna know more about my struggles with insomnia, check out that video, I'll link it below. But I really struggled with insomnia and meditation was one of the things that helped me the most with healing my insomnia. In that video, I shared that I meditate myself to sleep. That is still what I do all these years later. So in one of my most recent videos, I shared how I meditate myself to sleep. It's a whole long video with all of the instructions. And there is also another video of just full length watching me meditate myself to sleep. I'll link those both below. <laughs> But I used meditation to fully relax my body and eventually I learned how to use it to make my body fall asleep and then I eventually learned how to make it make my mind fall asleep. So I used meditation very, very intentionally for deep relaxing and to release all of the tension that I had in my body and uh, it really worked for me. I will also link below my favorite resource for free guided meditations. I use those for years. If I ever look up guided meditations, that's my resource. That's where I go. I also have my own free guided meditation that I put out back in November. You can check that out if you want to listen to my voice as you meditate. That's an option too. I do plan to do more meditations in the future. Number four is massage. I saw my physical therapist once a week for many years <laughs> and mostly what I saw her for was massage therapy because I had all these chronic pain and chronic tension spots and so massage was what worked best for me and I did a really really light type of massage. I do less is more with me. <laughs> Weekly massages though made all the difference with my pain and it made life bearable. It was enough to get me through what I was going through and I'm super super lucky and very thankful that I was able to see a physical therapist for that. My mom is a licensed physical therapist, so she was able to do techniques on me at home. And now I have a fiance who's great at giving massages, so I have my bases covered in terms of my massage needs, and I understand that not everyone has that. So if you don't have that, maybe you have a loved one who can help you out if you need massage. You can also do a lot of different types of massages on yourself, but if you can't do it on yourself, there's also lots of types of massagers. So like a handheld massager or a leg massager, a foot massager, a back massager, a massaging chair, or like a massaging chair insert. There's so many options for things that you can do. If you need massage, there are ways to make it happen. So that's what I suggest. If you need it, make it happen. There's lots of options out there. The types of massage techniques that made the most impact on me was um, craniosacral therapy. It was like a cranial technique. I can't really tell you much about it, but I know that's what it's called. Um, and very light touch, gentle massage. Um, I did a lot of work on my fascia, not like deep tissue massage. That does not work for me. We also did a lot of lymph drainage massaging and she did a lot of um, stomach massaging to help the GI problems I had. I actually shared two of those massages that she taught me how to do on myself. So if you wanna check out the stomach massage, it's for 
IBS, gastroparesis, constipation, etc. It's also for detoxing. You can check that out below. I also shared the lymph drainage massage that she taught me. The face and neck portion is actually really great for releasing tension that you have in this area, but of course it's mostly intended for a lymph drainage and like detoxing massage, but you can watch that video too. I will link both of those below if you're curious. The lymph drainage massage also really helped with my tension headaches as well, just by the way. Number five, and last but not least, art and music. Art and music are so, so healing. When I play music, I feel nothing except for the music. In fact, back when I was dying and going through so much, music was one of the only things that when I did it, everything else would just kind of disappear. It was one of the only things that I could just check out and I didn't feel any of my pain and I didn't feel my mental health feeling like it was on fire. I just felt the music. And having those types of hobbies where when you do it, everything else disappears, that can sometimes be life-saving. Like that can make such a huge difference. The arts saved my life. It was my lifeline. And technically, yes, science and medicine is scientifically the reason that my body is still here. But the reason that I'm still here and that I didn't give up is because of the arts. It's because I had so many amazing artistic hobbies that I turned to that gave me like a safe place amidst all of the chaos that was going on in my life. Music, writing, journaling, reading, coloring, painting, crafting, sewing, crocheting, knitting. Those are just some of the things that I personally turned to. Those were some of my hobbies that helped save my life and helped keep me sane. I so, so highly encourage to find hobbies that you love that help you feel that feeling of when I'm doing it, nothing else in the world exists. In this moment, I have peace and this thing gives me joy. It gives me an escape. It gives me a release. Find hobbies that make you feel that. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is, but if it works for you, it works for you. I think some people feel that way with video games. I don't, video games stress me out. But some people feel that way with video games, just for an example. Whatever it is that works for you, that gives you that feeling of peace and a healthy escape, do that. Make time for that in your life because it's so important to be able to have a healthy outlet where you can just relax. Like I said, music was some of my own form of therapy. Music was actually my start here on YouTube, so if you want to check out my music covers, you can check that out in this playlist, Hey oh, It's Covers. At this point in the video, I will share with you some personal examples of how I release tension. I have bullet points listed in this blog post. By the way, this is also available in blog. If I notice that my body is tense, I move around, I sway, I stretch. Um, sometimes I lay on the floor, I breathe, I meditate, and then afterwards I do something artistic. That's the order, right? I move around, I sway, I stretch, I do yoga, then I lay on the floor and meditate, and then afterwards I do something artistic. That's my order that I do relaxation. That's pretty much my most common thing that I do. That's how I cope. <laughs> If it's warm outside, I may go for a walk or I may go sit outside and just kind of unplug and enjoy nature for a while. If it's summertime, maybe I'll go swimming. Doing water aerobics was actually a really, really helpful thing for me in my chronic illness. Um, it helped with my chronic pain, it helped with my chronic tension, it helped with my stress, it made me happy. It also really helped me exercise and kind of retone my body. Pretty much every summer I just get back into doing water aerobics and I see great improvements. So if you have access to a pool or somewhere where you can swim, that could be a good option for you. If it's cold, maybe I'll take a bath. Could even be a detox bath or a salt bath. If a bath is not an option, a foot soak is also an option. I literally just use like a small storage container as a foot bath. I don't have a fancy foot bath. It's just it's just a plastic bin um, and it works and that's fine. That's super inexpensive to do. I also use different types of music to intentionally shift my mood. I've listened to rain as white noise. I've listened to the ocean as white noise and that was sometimes really helpful for me. I also have a lot of different types of music playlists that I have categorized for the different moods. Uh, typically I listen to slower tempo 
calmer more folksy music later at night just because that calms me or like if I need to chill out that's what I listen to but you can check out my Spotify if you want to check out like my personal playlists specifically for tension headaches or migraines or releasing um, tension relating to that I focus a lot on neck stretches and relaxing my jaw relaxing my shoulders and I typically massage in those areas and I use pressure points as well this is a really good pressure point right here in the middle of your forehead that's one that I do a lot when I get headaches um, but like you can rub your temples if you have a headache here or you can like rub the back of your neck um, that's so nice <laughs> I have used um, massage and pressure points on myself for years and it's actually really easy to just google the part of your body plus the word pressure points <laughs> or massage and then read articles or look at google images it's so so easy to find so like for example pressure points for headaches is something I've searched a lot or shoulder massage techniques a lot of these things are things you can actually really easily learn online if you just google it so I suggest that that's what I did in my own life. I just googled a lot until I learned how to do it and then I do it on myself until it feels good. Just kind of play around with it. Anyway, that's a suggestion. <laughs> a tip specifically for chronic jaw tension. This is a topic that I've had come up surprisingly with a lot of people. The chronic jaw tension thing where people would ask me if I had that and I did. I actually really struggled with chronic jaw tension and that's not something I've ever mentioned online before. But I had to figure out ways how to cope with that, right? So one of the best tips for dealing with chronic jaw tension is to hang your jaw open. Your mouth will still be closed. So that's, I'm not telling you to be like an open mouth breather all the time. Your mouth will be closed, um, but your teeth will be separated. When your teeth are touching, you're more likely to start biting down harder. So if you're, for example, someone who grinds your teeth or you're prone to clenching your jaw, if your teeth are touching, you may just automatically like clench more. But if you hang your jaw slightly open, like a comfortable amount, whatever that means for you, if you hang your jaw comfortably open and have your teeth not touch, then you're much less likely to clench down. Like you'll catch yourself. As soon as your teeth touch, you'll feel it and you're like, oh crap, I'm doing it. Versus if your teeth are already touching, it's easier to kind of like, you don't realize that you're doing it. But if your teeth are apart, the moment you touch, you're like, oh, shoot. Um, another tip, and this is what I do, is you keep your tongue between your molars. You keep your tongue between your teeth so that they can't touch. And this is kind of odd to do in the beginning. Um, it feels a little bit weird when you're first doing it, but after a while, it very quickly just becomes subconscious. You don't even notice it. I do it without even like thinking about it. And my mom does this too because she had jaw clenching issues as well. She was the one who taught me this stuff. And I come from a, a family of dentists, so <laughs> these are things that, that we just, we know. <laughs> so this is what your teeth would look like touching. This is what your mouth looks like when you're hanging it open. Doesn't look that different. Just a slight difference, you see that? Um, and that's without my tongue between my teeth. This is with my tongue between my teeth. Looks the same, right? <laughs> so I'll go back and forth between tongue and no tongue. not much of a difference and when you have your tongue between your teeth I'm not saying go like this you're not like biting it all the way through you're actually just keeping it between mostly your molars and a little bit teeny tiny bit will come to the front but it's not visible so that's my tongue between my teeth that's actually a tip if you want your smile to look more natural <laughs> by the way because <laughs> a lot of people like try and smile with their teeth touching and that's what it looks like <laughs> I keep looking in my viewfinder by the way <laughs> like this looks like a very forced smile but if you put your tongue between your teeth it looks more natural or if you just hang open a little bit more 
like there's actually I'm like not touching at all it looks more relaxed so that's a tip don't smile with your teeth touching it looks weird <laughs> that is today's video thank you guys for watching if you like this video make sure to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you want to come back for more if you're interested in my health topic videos you can check out my Lyme Diaries playlist or I have my clean living playlist check out my channel there's lots of stuff you can also head to my blog and click on the all content bar and you can browse through all of my content. All of the links that I mentioned today will be linked below this video. If you don't want to rewatch this video to review the information, you can actually read this in blog form over on my blog. I will link it below. Thanks for watching guys. Classic mayo. See, <laughs> not touching my teeth. <laughs>